Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, October 21st. Our, we are still in Unit 2, which is entitled, God Destroys and Recreates. God Destroys and Recreates. Uh, this is Lesson 8 from the Adult Quarterly. The title of the, today's lesson from the Adult Quarterly is Promises Give Hope. Our devotional reading is taken from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. Our background scripture is Genesis chapter 18, verses 9, 9 rather to 15, and 21, verses 1 to 7, which is also our printed passage. Uh, the lesson aims from the adult quarterly or number one comprehend God's grace and power manifested in the birth of Isaac to Abraham and Sarah number two appreciate the value of patience as God works out the divine will on his timetable not ours and then the third aim is pray for faith to await God's promised blessings the lesson has three major divisions. The first is doubting the extraordinary, verses uh, chapter 18, verses 9 to 12. The second is guarantee of the extraordinary, chapter 18, verses 13 to 15. And then the third, thanksgiving for the extraordinary. And that's covered between Genesis chapter 21, verses 1 to 7. From the standard commentary, the lesson title is The Birth of the Promised Son. Birth of the Promised Son. Lesson aims or explain how the birth of Isaac fits the larger framework of Abraham's covenant. Number two, discuss ways that the manner in which God fulfilled the promise required patience on the part of Abraham and Sarah. And then number three, identify situations in which their, their own faith, that's our own faith, has been challenged by God's apparent delay in his fulfilling his promise. Additional aims from the standard are... I'm sorry, uh, those are the additional aims from the standard. Uh, the standard has three, uh, two major divisions. One is entitled Human Impossibility, and that's covered between chapter 18, verses 9 to 15, and number two, Divine Reality, and that's covered between Genesis 21, 1 to 7. And before we get into... Um, a little background discussion and then uh, verse by verse um, discussion of the lesson I would like to read our uh, our lesson text uh, first passage is from Genesis chapter 18 verses 9 to 15 and it reads and they said unto him where is Sarah thy wife and he said behold in the tent and he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, after I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. In our second passage from chapter 21, verses 1 to 7, reads, And the Lord visited Sarah, as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. 
For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh, so that all that hear will laugh with me. And she said, Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given child suck? For I have borne him a son in his old age. In last week's lesson, we we read about uh, Abraham's call, um, him being a descendant of Terah, who was a descendant of Shem, uh, one of Noah's sons. And we read about God's promise to him. God called him to go to a land uh, that he he didn't know. In fact, he didn't know where he was going when he was called from Haran to go to a land that God was going to give him and his descendants. And since uh, last week's lesson, uh, we God has spoken to Abraham again and reconfirmed his promise of uh, his uh, being a father of many nations uh, in chapter 15 uh, and God promising uh, the multitude uh, a great mu- that his descendants would be a great multitude as the stars are in heaven God appears to Abraham again um, in chapter 17 but before we get to chapter 17 and verse 16 um, there is a weakening of faith on the part of Sarah, or Sarai, as she was called then, and of course Abraham was probably um, his, his faith was not uh, strong enough uh, to resist her suggestion to go in unto Hagar, give God a hand, help help God out with this uh, this plan, this promise uh, that God had made, and we know from uh, from that act uh, Ishmael was born, and. Uh, when we get into chapter 17, uh, God appears again to Abraham. Uh, he uh, tells him again about this uh, this promise, how he's going to be the father of uh, of many. And uh, in fact, he he renames him Abraham. Abram was his name before, which meant uh, the father of many. And, of course, Abraham means great father, father of a multitude. And he renamed his wife Sarai, Sarah. And he promised, and Abraham is 99 at this point. Read that in uh, chapter 17. So when we get to chapter 18, uh, we, which is where our lesson picks up, um, God, uh, again, actually, let's go back to chapter 17 for a minute. Uh, Abraham has has really struggled in his faith. Um, he has, of course, uh, weakened at times and um, told the king uh, Abimelech that uh, Sarah was his sister. And we know he'd done the same thing in Egypt a while back. And, of course, that demonstrated a, a weakness of his faith. Uh, he also, uh, in chapter 17, God had also given Abraham... Uh, and a commandment to circumcise the foreskin of his flesh. Now, he was to do that at age 99, and also all the men uh, in his camp were to be circumcised. And then he gave a- an ordinance going forward that children, babies on the eighth day were to be circumcised, and that circumcision was a token of the covenant between Abraham and God. And we could say more about that. But when we get into chapter 18... God gives again uh, a promise. Uh, by the way, in chapter 17, verse 17, Abraham falls on his face and, and he actually laughs at the prospect of, 
of having a child now. Uh, he is old. He's 99. And he laughs. Um, and uh, so God appears again in chapter 18. But this time uh, with a difference. I mean, a, he, he's basically saying the same thing. But he's giving some specifics. He's saying about this time next year, uh, he's going to fulfill his promise. So we're going to pick up and read uh, verse by verse and see if we can understand the lesson, each verse in context. So verse one reads, now, sorry. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And if I can back up just a little bit, uh, Abraham uh, is being visited by three men or three uh, uh, beings that appear to be men. If you read from the first verse of chapter 18, uh, he sees them. Abraham is looking out. Uh, along the plains of Mamre, and he sees these three men coming towards him, and he welcomes them uh, into uh, the shade of the tree that he's sharing, and he offers them a meal, uh, which, is, which was the hospitality, typical hospitality afforded uh, sojourners in the Mideast of that time, in that time. And, of course, he dresses a kid goat, and he has bread made and so forth, and they actually eat with him. He doesn't know uh, that these are the Lord, the God himself, a theophany uh, in the form of a, a human, as well as two angels that are headed towards Sodom and Gomorrah. And uh, he doesn't know this at the time. He's just, uh, he's just extending hospitality to them. And so verse 1, I'm sorry, 9 rather, when it says, And they said unto him, that is the three, that's the Lord and two angels, where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, behold, in the tent. Well, you know, it was uh, not the custom in that day, and it's not the custom in certain parts of the world, certainly the Middle East now, uh, for women to dine with men, unmarried women to even have conversations uh, with men outside the family. And so this must have seemed strange to Abraham that these men would, would even know his wife's name. Uh, and they asked, and he says, well, she, well she's in the tent. Uh, and then uh, uh, verse 10, 10a, they said, and he said, and, and now we go from they, which is the three, to he, which is the Lord speaking now. Uh, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life, and lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. Now that's the old King James Version. I will return. He is saying he will return. That's God incarnate or God in the appearance of a, a man saying that he's going to return uh, according to the time of life. If you look at the NIV, that phrase, according to the time of life, simply means around this time next year or at this time next year, I will return. Now, Abraham is uh, still 99 at the time. So this is perhaps a few weeks or months after God had spoken to Abraham before when when Abraham actually laughed at the prospect um, of having a child at, at that age. Uh, now, now, part B of verse 10 says, And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now, at this point, Abraham is, is thinking, wait a minute now, this, this must be a prophet or something. And uh, he has to be aware of the, the promise that God has made to me. Uh, and um, he's here. Uh, basically to confirm that promise, uh, he's, he's realizing this is not just uh, an ordinary man, or at least th that's what we would think. Well, Sarah hears him. We don't know whether Sarah is eavesdropping or, or whether uh, the Lord spoke loud enough for her to hear. 
uh, she's behind them again and uh, she overhears what what the Lord says. She may think the same thing. This maybe this is a prophet and he's confirming what the Lord has promised us. Uh, verse 11. Now, Abraham and Sarah were, were well, I'm sorry, were old and well stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Now, we know that Sarah uh, had already um, had a fertility problem. Uh, uh, she was uh, barren from the time we met her in uh, coming out of Ur back in chapter 12. And now she's not only has she not been barren all of her adult life, but she's beyond the age of childbearing. In other words, she's in menopause. So Abraham is uh, 99, Sarah is 89. And um, verse 12 reads, Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, so I have pleasure, my Lord being old also. Now, let's let's just think about where Sarah's uh, faith is. This is this is kind of a testimony of her faith. Uh, she has uh, uh, demonstrated back in chapter 16 that she has a problem uh, trusting that God is going to deliver on his promise outside of the natural, outside of what is humanly possible. Uh, so she tries to help God out by giving Abraham her handmaid to have a child by. So that was kind of a demonstration of her faith. And again, Abraham going along with it uh, demonstrated where his faith was at the time as well. It was it was not where God wanted it to be, far from uh, the father of faith that he wanted to make out of him. So she is thinking this is impossible, you know, not only... <laughs> Have I been barren all my life? But now I'm beyond childbearing age. And so it's doubly impossible, if you will. Uh, and she said, and she kind of, it's kind of a cruel joke. She's kind of, uh, thinking of it as, you know, for, for anyone to suggest that I'm going to have pleasure. In other words, enjoy intercourse and conceive and have this, this reproach uh, taken off of me. Uh, women in that time uh, were uh, were thought to be unfulfilled unless they not only bore a child or children, but bore a male child. And so uh, she was uh, uh, looked down on by by other women, certainly other women that were able to bear children. And she's saying uh, she think she's considering Abraham's old age as well. Well, he's He's too old as well. Uh, uh, so how is uh, he going to enjoy, have pleasure of, of intercourse and, and be able to, uh, uh, to, to impregnate me? So she's thinking in the natural. And unfortunately, uh, too often we do that. You know, when we take our eyes off, off God and the fact that we're going to get to this rhetorical question, uh, is anything impossible for God when we when we when we lose sight of that reality that God is omnipotent all powerful there's nothing that he cannot do we begin to try to figure out uh how how else is something going to get done how are we going to do it or how is it going to happen in the natural and and that's the real benefit of staying in God's word being constantly reminded of who he is, you know, and what he is capable of. And that is anything that is within his will. And so uh, Sarah, again, is seeing in the natural, as as many of us do. And we want uh, to look uh, with eyes of faith. We want to trust that God can do anything in his will. And he's, and he's said that repeatedly throughout his word. So let's move on to chapter, thir I'm sorry, verse 13. Which reads, and the Lord said unto Abraham, wherefore or why did Sarah laugh, saying, shall I of a surety or for sure bear a child which am old? Now, if you recall from 
verse 12, it said that Sarah laughed within herself, which means the laugh was not audible. It, it, you know, she, she laughed, but it was something that was, again, in her mind, uh, but not heard. But we see in verse 13, the Lord now, the, the person speaking is clearly identified. And in the King James, the Lord is spelled capital, all caps, L-O-R-D, which is the self-existent one, Jehovah, the self-existent one, the Lord God. And again, he is appearing as a man. So this is what's called a theophany. Uh, and he said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? So he obviously uh, is aware or heard uh, the thoughts of her heart demonstrating his omniscience or his all-knowingness. And so now Abraham is recognizing this man is not just a prophet. He, he, he probably recognizes him as the Lord at this point, but maybe uh, perhaps he still thinks he's just a prophet. And then he, he, he says, um, why does she laugh? Uh, shall I... Uh, thinking again, uh, so should she uh, certainly or of a surety bear a child being of old age? Verse 14a, this is the rhetorical question that the Lord himself asked. Rhetorical question means a question that has an obvious answer. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for the Lord? What's the answer, class? The answer is no. Nothing is impossible for the one who created the universe, who spoke creation into existence, uh, who created ex nihilo. That means created all things from nothing. Nothing is impossible for him. And again, we want to keep that in mind. Always. We want to keep that in mind that uh, and we want to ask for things uh, in faith with that in mind, but recognizing that God is going to do what is in his will. We can ask for the moon, but God's not going to deliver the moon to us because that's not in his will. So uh, we do want to keep that in mind. Now, uh, verse 14b reads, at the time appointed, the time that he'd already appointed, about a year from now, he says, I will return uh, unto thee according to the time of life. And again, that's a year from now, the same time next year. And Sarah shall have a son and Sarah shall have a son. Now, uh, lest you think that uh, God uh, might have uh, changed uh, this promise of a child because of Sarah's lack of faith. Or even because of Abraham's apparent lack of faith when he laughed back in chapter 17, verse, verse 17. Uh, this was an unconditional promise that God had made to Abraham, uh, going back to, uh, chapter 12. And also, it was the beginning of the fulfillment of the promise that God made to Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Uh, and so about the the son uh, that is going to crush the head of the serpent. Uh, the serpent is going to bruise his heel, uh, but the, the seed of the woman is going to crush the head of the serpent, and he did that on the cross. Now, um, so he, this is again an unconditional promise to Abraham, and so he is reaffirming it is going to happen. It's going to happen about a year from now. Now, that's different. That's a different promise from all the others that God made to Abraham in the other appearances uh, going back to chapter 12. He told him, you're going to, your seed, I'm going to multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, as the sand along the seashore. And, and you're going to, um, you're, you're going to inherit this land. Your seed's going to inherit this land, this land of Canaan. And, and speaking everything future, well, now he's put a, a deadline by which he's going to deliver on his promise uh, of the promised child. Now, if, if we go back to 
uh, chapter 17, Abraham kind of has a discussion with God and, you know, he's getting a little little frustrated that he hasn't had a child and he's and he's saying you know yeah my the only one in my household uh is 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 a servant uh Eliezer and I mean the only uh the oldest of his servants and he's going to be my heir and so forth and God reassures him to know this child is going to come out of your own bowels this promised son is going to come out of your own bowels and it wasn't the one by Hagar he says it's by Sarah and you notice that emphasis is made that this child is by Sarah. It wasn't to be the one by Hagar either. Now, then, verse 15, Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. Now, this was a nervous laugh. She got caught. I mean, she didn't know that anybody heard her and really, she didn't laugh audibly, but she laughed in her heart. And, of course, God looks on the heart. So it doesn't matter whether we say something or or laugh out loud uh, when uh, because God obviously knows what's in our heart. And that that's what was revealed to the Lord. And so uh, even though she she might have been afraid that uh uh, now she knows this is this is at least a prophet or someone that certainly knows the Lord and uh, what he might do uh, as a result of her being caught in this lie. She she obviously was uh, 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 concerned about uh, embarrassing her husband. Uh, and so she she whips up this quick lie, you know, so so our one of the commentators says uh, to get off the hook, so to speak. But, uh, of course, God knows uh uh, our all of our hearts and of course uh we never want to lie uh, uh to god and obviously she, she didn't know that this was god but we don't want to lie period okay because <laughs> god god knows when we lie now so th- that's the first passage now we move into the second passage we we fast forward to chapter 21 what happens between uh, chapter 18, where we leave off at verse 15, and chapter 21, verse 1. Well, we know that uh, the Lord stays uh, with Abraham, and he's Abraham at this point, been renamed Abraham, and tells him what he's going to do. He says, shall I, shall I hide from Abraham or keep from Abraham what I'm about to do, seeing he's going to be the father of many nations and and through him, of course, all the nations of the world is going to be blessed. And, and he says no. So he lets Abraham know that he's sending the two angels with him down to Sodom and Gomorrah. And if they find it to be as uh, it apparently is, uh, as wicked, uh, given over to wickedness, then he's going to destroy it. And then Abraham goes through this um, bargaining, uh, asking if the Lord would spare uh Sodom if there were 50 and if there were 40 and so forth and if there were 10 because Lot his nephew Lot and his family is there he knows that and he wants the city spared for his sake if no other and so and then in verse 19 we see where God actually does destroy Sodom and Gomorrah Uh, he rains down fire and brimstone Uh, you know the story Uh, when we get to the latter part of uh Chapter 20, of course, Lot and his daughters uh, commit the, the incest in verse in chapter 20. Uh, of course, Abraham uh, is again, he journeys toward the south and he dwells uh, between Kadesh and Shur. And of course, he confronts uh, or he runs into Abimelech. And because Sarah now, Sarah, <laughs> Sarah is 99 and Sarah is beautiful. Now, when she was younger 69 or whatever uh the king of egypt was taken by her and now abimelech is taken by her at at 89 she must really have been a beautiful woman and so sarah has her to ask her to lie again as as she he had asked her before and say she was his sister and of course god deals with abimelech and of course uh that was a demonstration of weak faith once again so we get to chapter 21 and uh and God is already again <laughs> the the thing that I guess is a little extraordinary 
from our perspective, looking back, and we all have demonstrated weak faith from time to time, is that God had given them this great assurance uh, just months before um, he stumbles with Abimelech. Uh, but we get to chapter 21, verse 1, and it reads, let's take 1 and 2 together, and they read, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord all caps, did unto Abraham as he had spoken. Now, this doesn't mean he physically visited her in person uh, by way of a theophany, but he, he, his spirit actually caused to happen what he had promised to do. In fact, she's, she's been impregnated uh, some months before. And he said, and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, okay, as he had promised, and the Lord did unto Abraham, delivered on his promise as he had spoken, for Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time which God had spoken to him. In other words, the same time the year before God had promised that a child would be born, a son would be born, and, and now the son is born just as God said it would happen, okay? And uh, a God always, when God gives specific uh, prophecies uh, through his prophets or directly, we can be sure that they're going to come to pass when he says they are, and they did in this case. And now... Um, Sarah and Abraham both realized, because they, they, this was a miracle, this could not have happened otherwise. Uh, we, we know that uh, uh, Abraham's body was, was, was spoken of as being dead in Hebrews, and, and Sarah's as well, her womb being dead. And, and of course, God miraculously enabled them to con conceive, enabled her to conceive, enabled, enabled Abraham to perform and to conceive. Uh, now, we know Abraham went on uh, having uh, children uh, because he, after Sarah died, uh, he remarried and he had other children. So he's well beyond 100 at this point. Uh, now, um, what God has, it has demonstrated is clearly nothing's impossible to him. Verse 3, and Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him. Whom Sarah bare unto him. Now, now let's get this now. The name of the, the son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare unto him. And what make it clear that this is by Sarah, born of him, okay, of, of, from his bowels, not an adopted child. Uh, he called him Isaac. Now, we know uh, Isaac means he laughs. Um, or it means he laughs. And we know that uh, Sarah laughed uh, back in chapter 18. I, I mean, uh, Abraham himself had laughed in ver chapter 17, verse uh, 17. Uh, and uh, so God uh, chose laughter to, to have him name the, the child laughter, and he actually uh, told uh, Abraham, he directed Abraham to name him that in chapter 17, verse 19. So Abraham is being obedient to God's commandment as far as the naming of his child. And now you have to think, that name reminded, uh, for the rest of their lives, it reminded uh, Abraham and Sarah of their lack of faith uh, when they did laugh um, and uh, how they perhaps thought that uh, it was impossible humanly and therefore impossible for them to have a child. Isaac, of course, uh, had to bear that name and it reminded him that he was the promised child of the covenant and that uh, God had directed Abraham to name him that again in Genesis chapter 17, verse 19. And, and he had an obligation to remain faithful to God, who had given him uh, not only that name, but his life 
in accordance with his promise to Abraham and that he was going to be the progenitor of uh, a, a, a multitude and many nations. And God had spoken to Abraham and said, kings are going to come out of you. And of course, they were going to come out of Isaac as well. Verse four, and Abraham circumcised his son Isaac being eight days old as God had commanded him. Now, Abraham has already kept one commandment that was in the naming of Isaac. And now he's also keeping the commandment that God gave for future males born of Abraham, the seed of Abraham, to be circumcised on the eighth day. Uh, and again, this was a token, a sign, if you will, of the covenant between God and Abraham. And so he was obedient to doing that when God told him to do it. He didn't wait till the ninth day or the tenth. He didn't do it on the on the fourth or the fifth day. He did it precisely when God had commanded him to do do it. Okay, so God uh, Abraham uh, was was obedient to God, and that is something that uh, we always want to do. We're going to see as Abraham gets older, his obedience uh, is is demonstrated uh, time and time again. Verse 5, And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. Uh, now, the fact that he was a hundred years old is significant for a couple of reasons. When we first met Abraham, or Abram, back in chapter 12, he was 25, I'm sorry, 75 years old. It has been 25 years since he was called, excuse me, out of Haran. And God gave him the promise then in, in chapter 12. And so it has been uh, a, a, a time of, 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 of growing, uh, a, a time in which uh, God grew Abraham's faith, a time that patience was required uh, for God. And we know uh uh, we can read in Isaac chapter 40, those who wait on the Lord. Uh, we, we are we are we are told in so many places in Scripture to wait on the Lord. And when the Lord promises something, he will deliver. So it stresses the miraculous nature. First, it stresses the miraculous nature of Isaac's birth, which occurred far beyond the time when either Abraham or his wife, Sarah, were able humanly to to bear a child. And then second, it stresses the patience again that was required of Abraham and Sarah. So for some 25 years, Sarah was 65 and Abraham, Abraham was 75 when they came out of Haran. And then verse uh, six reads, and Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh so that all that hear will laugh with me. Now, Sarah is uh, she she laughed. She basically doubted God that that, that God was able to uh, uh, enable her to have a child. And, and, and she la that was a doubt of laugh. But now she is talking about a laugh of joy. Uh, she's saying God has made me to laugh. He's he's uh, it, it was it was both a, a laugh of joy and then a laugh of incredulity that something like this could even happen. And, and she's going to go on to say how others are not going to, or they're going to laugh just thinking about it, but they'll also laugh and joy for her. But that's what she's saying. She's, she says, so that all that hear, in fact, she says it in this verse, all that hear will laugh with me. All that hear about what happened, they will, they will laugh because of the, incredibleness of what God has done. The, uh, and they will also laugh uh, with joy uh, for her. They will join in her joy. And then verse 7 says, And she said, Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah would have given children suck? For I have borne him a son in his old age. Who would have said it? Again, that's think, thinking uh, and looking at things in the natural. Who would have said that? So, so we want to. Uh, I mean, there are, there are many uh, that would say um, would laugh at miracles uh, today. 
but we need to recognize that God still performs miracles. God can still do anything. And we can ask for anything in faith if it's in God's will. And if it is in God's will, then we're sure that we can expect him to do it, no matter what is humanly possible. We know that the God of all creation can do anything. So there's several lessons, several things we can take away from this lesson. Uh, and, and, and the first is uh, to recognize, again, that, that, that God is omniscient, omniscient. He knows all. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. And that uh, he grows or he, he wants us to wait uh, in patience for him to deliver on his promises. If God promises something, God is faithful to deliver on his promises. So we hope that uh, 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 you have a blessed uh, week ahead. Uh, we thank you for uh, sharing uh, in this lesson with us. And God bless and keep you uh, until next time.